Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jay Metzger. I am the GIS manager for the Rhode Island Department of Health. Um, I am involved with uh, serving GIS throughout Rhode Island, and I guess I'm the GIS manager for the Department of Health, so therefore, um, my population is the state of Rhode Island. So G GIS to me is important because I think the most important thing about GIS is the ability to actually get information to people. That was the thing that most struck me when I first ran to GIS in college was that I can actually show people data, which is something that's a bit esoteric to most people. I think that in, in commonplace would be you get a spreadsheet, you get some charts, you get some graphs, but to be able to actually show people where things are happening and what's happening with them, um, I think it's just amazing. So my philosophy is always, what's the best way and the easiest way that we can share data with people? And the answer to that is using GIS to best manage data, to manage expectations, and to make things easily viewable. I think the situation that most health departments are in, and the thing that causes them the most pain is probably the same thing. They're trying to bring GIS into the future of public health. And whenever you're trying to advance technology in a workplace, one of the biggest struggles is actually getting all of these old antiquated te technologies and procedures to adhere to a new adoption of technology. Um, to me, GIS is the answer for all of public health. And GIS is where public health is going. Because especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, we're seeing a real need to show people where things are happening. And it's all based off of data. And it's all based off of very rich data. So I think really the pain point is trying to get that information to the public as cleanly and as, as succinctly as possible while still battling the fact that all of your systems are from an analog age. So I think really digitizing information, making processes automated, using geography and GIS to best share information are really where they're going and what needs to happen. Well, I think we're seeing what happens if, if the departments or state departments follow the idea of bringing technology and GIS into the future. Again, with the COVID-19 pandemic being the example, we're seeing a lot of public health being shared with, with the public. Um, the COVID-19 hub site that we created for the pandemic has received almost 1.5 million views at this point. So I think really the problem going into it was how can we get our information to people, making it both seamless and automated? And the answer has been using GIS to facilitate all the processes. To me, really to me, that's the answer and that's what's been happening. And so I think we see a, a proven point of trial and error where we're trying to show things, we run into errors, but then you get successes from there. And the success is having a stable GIS platform to share public information with Rhode Islanders and to best track what's happening in the world and to share that information as well. Well, I think within the same, within the same example, we're seeing what happens if you don't adopt GIS into your problem solving. You know, one thing about GIS is that it's not just mapping. I guess maybe it used to be mapping, but the foundation of GIS since its inception has been data. And I think that that's something that people really miss, which is there is a data management component to GIS. It's actually one of the major tenets of GIS. And frankly, without data, you wouldn't have anything to map. I think that people forget that that's really built into the entire platform. And so I think as an example, what happens if public health departments don't use GIS to its fullest extent is what's been happening during the COVID response as well, because I think that the unknown, which is GIS to most people, the unknown seems unfathomable, but I think if we would have, as a state, if we could use GIS more to its potential, particularly as a data management process, we'd be able to uh, have saved a lot of money through this pandemic. The state decided to go with some software platforms to integrate other data platforms 
And what ended up happening was they spent a lot of money on that. To me, it would really take those pain points away and make it more focused on a positive, and that would be using GIS to its fullest, particularly for data management, and then running all the systems through GIS. I think that that's where things are going, and I think that also emphasizes the pain point of trying to adopt technology, particularly in a pandemic, when everyone's running and working as hard as they can, it's sometimes hard to stop and think about what maybe the best thing would be financially or the best thing would be for the whole system when everyone's working so hard and sometimes in pods when they're working. I think that the approach to using GIS as the main platform for both data dissemination and data aggregation is that we really spend, or I can say Esri spends so much time trying to create a world in which GIS and their software platform is able to be integrated into these different healthcare programs and facilities. After going through this pandemic, I think that we're seeing why it's so effective because a lot of the techniques in GIS are built to be user-friendly. And I think that every year since the second I've heard about GIS, the world of GIS is trying to make things easier to understand and easier to use as a layman. Of course, we're seeing things like Google Maps, which everybody uses now. So it's, it's this idea that everybody has GIS on their mobile devices. They have access to it on their laptops and computers. There's websites and you know everything out there to use. And I think it's being effective because it's, being e it's easier to use. The concepts are easier. And you don't really need to be a GIS specialist with a general specificity in many areas to actually use and to get information from GIS now. Well, so it, I think of one example that's pretty clear to me, and it's, it comes in terms of where we are at the Rhode Island Department of Health and how we got there. As I said earlier, it's, I think it's sometimes easier for public health professionals or CEOs of companies who maybe don't quite understand the power of GIS. It's easier for them to spend money in areas that they do know whether that be consulting or consultants or bringing in other people to use other software platforms. In Rhode Island, we use Salesforce, which is a major, uh, well, the major quote that we've brought in, and it's been a major part of this response. Uh, the thing about other platforms is that sometimes they don't always do what you need to do. So the one thing I can think about when it comes to sharing an example of how GIS really helped to save things is that the state had brought in a consultant to create a dashboard for the COVID hub site. And, you know, the whole time I kept thinking to myself, boy, we can really do something in GIS. We can really do something. We could, we can make it better. We can do something great. And um, long story short, when the consultant was giving their pitch as far as how things were looking from their vantage point and what their plan was, it, it wasn't quite making the, the needs of the project. And so when I, when I felt, when I heard the door creak open, it was just a, I quickly came through with a project that I had created that was ready to go. And so to me, on a public health side, I look at it as saving the state money by not having to pay a consultant to do work that their employees can already do. And I think that that's something that's important because with GIS and the technology that we have, really I have the ability to compete with every consultant out there because all the tips and tools and applications are there for me, but really it comes to a point where I have to figure out a way to use those tools and applications to best solve a problem for a project. So really to me, because I had the tools and applications and the foresight to have something ready to go, I was able to come through with a bid that we're now using today on the COVID-19 data hub site for the Rhode Island Department of Health. and with that, save the state quite a bit of money on consulting and ultimately come through with a project that we've been able to build upon and really create something that's pretty special. I think that probably the most controversial thing that I have or my own mindset, it really comes from my training as a GIS professional. You know, to me, we all took classes in school or we've all heard about the idea of lying with maps or lying with data. 
And I think the reality is that through this pandemic, I've seen situations where choices have been made to report data with a certain lens. And I respect people's opinions for how that should be shown and for what lens it should be shown through. But I can tell you that my mindset is pretty black and white in that I believe the data should be shared with very little manipulation. I believe the data should be, people should be able to understand data and understand the context through footnoting and through messaging, but it should be reported as itself. We shouldn't add our own bias, our own stories. I think the other side of that comes in the form of um, just data ethics and making sure that we're doing our utmost to adhere to every piece of ethical data standard that we have. And I think as GIS professionals, it's too easy to uh, fall into a pit where you're trying to appease somebody, whether that be a president, a CEO, a governor. If, if you're questioning whether or not you're doing the right thing, it's time to take a step back and push pause. Because ultimately, yes, saving time and saving money and using GIS will help save lives. But the other side of that is if you go quickly and you go too quickly and you hurry something that's not you're not sure about, which I've seen in a lot of examples, the idea of getting things out faster before you're making sure that it's ready to go. And for me, that is just one of my major tenets as a GIS professional. I have to make sure that I can stand behind the work I'm doing. And that starts with the data that, that I'm using for these applications and analyses. So I really think it comes to both making sure you're confident in the data that you're receiving and asking the questions about the validity and the QA, QC of the data. And then also making sure that ethically, we are standing beside the GIS work we're performing and that it can be repeatable because GIS is a science. And the part of science that I love is when you do an experiment, can you take notes, can you document it? What's your methodology? What's your process? What types of questions do you have? What's your hypothesis? GIS works the very same way. You get a new data set, ask your questions, make sure everything's right, put it through your methodology, document everything. And then when you're done with your project, you can look back and repeat your process and build upon your process and understand what areas need to be changed and edited and maybe things that didn't go right. But I think until you get to your data accuracy, your ethics of data in stone, and really making sure that you're sure of your work, you know, that people can hurry things with, with suspect data and come out with answers to questions or statistics that maybe are not as repeatable and are not as solid as you'd like to have. Being a public health professional during the COVID-19 pandemic has been very difficult because not only do I have to deal with the pandemic at home with my family that I'm worried about and my friends that I'm worried about, but also my work is bringing into the pandemic. So I have to also be sure that the work we're doing is accurate and that we're working at a pace that we don't burn ourselves out. And I think that that's something I have to applaud all of my public health brethren throughout this experience. It's been eye-opening and it's been incredible. And it's, it's, it's just brought the whole team together but I think if there comes a time where you have to step back and look at your speed and your accuracy and make sure that you're getting the most speed for your accuracy. I think the advice I can give to GIS people or young professionals looking to enter the GIS field is to really think about your resume. And I will tell you that since I graduated school, I looked at having a resume and a portfolio as I would do similar to being an art student because there is a piece, a large piece of GIS. Yes, there's data dissemination. Yes, there's data analyses. But then you get into the layout and design side where it is a, a graphic design or an artist touch to things. And so one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is think about putting together a portfolio of your work so that when you send a resume to an to an, and you're applying to a job, when you send a resume, you're able to also send examples of your work. And it might be something if you worked for, if you spent time as an internship for a, a program that you can't share exactly their work, maybe you can share snippets of what they did, maybe you need to redact some of the work. 
But I think the biggest thing is I probably out of the 300 applicants, less than 5% had some example of work. I'd say about the same percentage had a resume that showed some personality of who they were. I think that's really big. When I was going through the resumes and thinking about who I want to bring on my team, because the reality of GIS work now is we're working in a mobile environment. We're working in a telecommuted environment. We're satellite learning. We're sharing information through cloud-based systems. I've, I've set up a team in March of GIS professionals through the state. I haven't seen them in six months, but we've been able to produce some amazing work. The only way I can get I can get an idea of who they were was to better understand their work and better understand who they are as GIS professionals. So I think if there's one thing I can leave you with today, I don't know the advice I can give you because my thing was I didn't necessarily get a lot of advice when I was going through school, but getting out of school, I tried to look and see how people were doing things, and I tried to fight against the stream. So I would do a lot of networking. I would join events like a networking event um, in my spare time, and this is where how I met Brad Fulton from uh, Honey Badger Analytics. Brad and I met through a Nerissa event. I don't want to, you know, give too much of a plug for Nerissa here, but the idea is if there are GIS professional organizations that you can volunteer for. Eurissa is New, New England Eurissa, and Eurissa um, stands for Urban Regional Information System Association. Eurissa is an international organization that helps GIS professionals get in touch and stay in touch. So if you can find a Eurissa uh, chapter in your area, get out there and get to know the GIS professionals in your area. Go to networking events. Join and volunteer for things. I met Brad last year at Eurissa Day, our, our annual conference. It's, it's a great way to go from being a prospective employee to becoming an employee because there's no better way of getting to know someone face to face. And I think to, I think the best thing I can give you is fight upstream. Make, make, it, make it so that you can get to know people on a personal level. And that way, if a job comes up or if an opportunity comes up, you might be the first person that individual thinks of because they know you already. And I can say on a, on a different note, that's, that you know it's beneficial when you look through 300 applicants for a job and you recognize three of them because they've been involved in the community, it's much easier to narrow those people down. So I think more than anything, the idea here is GIS is so useful in public health. And I think that in the future, you're going to see more and more public health professionals utilizing GIS because of its power. And I think even when we can look through and do a hot wash of the COVID-19 pandemic, whenever that happens at the Rhode Island Department of Health, we're going to have a lot of discussions about GIS. Because I think that although we've had successes with GIS, and, and I'm so proud of the work we've done, that being somebody who's never satisfied with being good enough, I think that with constructive criticism, we can really help to show the Department of Health in Rhode Island how to better have used GIS. And moving into the future, we can show them the best ways that we can be integrating GIS into our workflows moving forward.